a tense 13-day standoff, an unlikely hero, a 25-year-old secret, and a big lie one president made to another president. Now, this is going to be very fast-paced. I'm going to read each question and then give you the answer. If you need a little bit of thinking time, hit the pause button during this time. And then after each answer, I'll give you a short explanation and a little bit of historical context. Discover what you know and what you should know about presidential leadership and handling times of crisis. In our Prez Trivia, Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. Question number one. What country did the United States come in conflict with in 1962 over a military buildup on the island of Cuba? Was it A, Germany, B, Japan, C, North Korea, or D, the Soviet Union? Three, two, one, now. The answer is the Soviet Union. This is during the Cold War, about 20 years into the Cold War, that heightened period, that heightened tension and period after World War II between the United States and the Soviet Union. What event prior to the Cuban Missile Crisis caused Cuban President Fidel Castro to look to the Soviet Union for economic and military assistance? Was it A, Bay of Pigs, B, Suez Canal, C, the Vietnam War, or D, the Korean War? Three, two, one, now. The answer is the Bay of Pigs. Here's a little bit of historical context. The Cuba went through a revolution between 1953 and 59, and in 1959, Fidel Castro took power and overthrew the then Cuban president, President Batista. Well, following that, the United States issued economic sanctions on Cuba. And the United States government, we come to find out later, through the CIA, covertly attempted to replace Castro. It was an operation called Operation Mongoose, where they had acts of sabotage during that time period. There were numerous attempts to take out Castro's life through assassination attempts. And then in 1961, there was the Bay of Pigs invasion, where the CIA trained some Cuban exiles to go back to invade the island of Cuba with the hopes of overthrowing Castro. Uh, it was a disaster. The landing craft uh, ran into the coral reef. There was no proper air support, and for certain there was no popular uprising. They were caught uh, when they landed, arrested by uh, Castro. It really was a big embarrassment for President Kennedy. He looks weak and he looks ineffective. When President Kennedy came into office as a young president, uh, promising us there on Inauguration Day that uh, about all of the dreams and visions for the future, uh, he had no foreign policy experience. And yet, during this time, uh, following this invasion, he looked very weak and ineffective. And Castro turned to the Soviet Union for economic and military assistance, while well, CIA agents very quickly began to notice there a lot of increased ship activity there in Cuba, and an increasing number of Russians, particularly military personnel. The CIA estimated that there was somewhere close to 10,000 Russian personnel there on the island, when really, actually, it was more like 40,000. And then the United States, with one of its U-2 spy planes, spotted the Soviets installing missiles right there on the island of Cuba. What did Kennedy's Joint Chiefs of Staff recommend when they first learned of the missiles in Cuba? A. Negotiate with the Soviets. B. A UN Security Council resolution. C. A naval blockade of Cuba. Or D. A full-scale invasion of Cuba. Three. Two, one, now. The answer is a full-scale invasion of Cuba. When Kennedy found out about the missile installation, he convened his National Security Council. Intelligence officials told the XCOM that the missiles they believed would be operational within two weeks. And little did we know at the time that they actually had some of those missiles, missiles operational and ready to fire. But now, missiles were pointed at the United States. They were now 90 miles off of Florida's coast. This is the closest any missiles have ever been to the continental United States. The CIA had all sorts of estimates, very clearly showing the wide range that th these missiles would, uh, 
would threaten here in North America and the United States. The estimate being that some 200 million Americans could be killed. And so now North America is threatened. Washington DC could be reached within five minutes now. And so the whole idea of bombing these sites and or invading Cuba was really taken off the table because it's very clear that Russians would have been killed and it would have drawn the United States into a war with the Russians, possibly World War III. What course of action did President Kennedy announce to the American people in his nationwide TV address on October 22, 1963? A. Bombing missile sites in Cuba. B. Covert operations in Cuba. C. Invasion of Cuba. Or D. Naval quarantine of Cuba. Three, two, one, now. The answer is a naval quarantine of Cuba. Kennedy believed a naval quarantine would at least buy him some time to find a resolution to this crisis. And the Soviets were presented with these facts uh, and they denied them and, and refused to come clean with what they were doing. In fact, the Soviet foreign minister, Andrei Gromyko, sat in the Oval Office and when confronted about these missiles being installed in Cuba, he looked right at Kennedy and lied right to his face about the missiles and denied that there were any missiles being installed. U.S. Ambassador Adlai Stevenson confronted the Russians right there uh, at the, in the United Nations and they simply refused to answer the questions and then he just simply presented the evidence to the United Nations. Do you, Ambassador Zorin, deny that the USSR has placed and is placing medium and intermediate range missiles and sites in Cuba? I'm prepared to wait for my answer until hell freezes over, if that's your decision. As the Soviet ships, some of Soviet ships were approaching the US blockade, the world basically held its breath uh, as the United States and the Soviet Union were now seemingly on the brink of war. October 27th, 1962 is considered to be the most dangerous day of the Cuban Missile Crisis. What is that day called? A. Black Friday, B. Black Saturday, C. Day of Doom, or D. Saturday Night Massacre? Three, two, one, now. The answer is Black Saturday. October 27th, is called Black Saturday because it really was the most dangerous day of the crisis. It was the closest we ever came to nuclear war. The events that occurred that day very easily could have spiraled out of control. The, the first incident, the United States had a U-2 spy plane that was shot down directly over Cuba. And now the first blood that was spilt was America. Kennedy knew of the risk of a, sh a possible shoot down. You know, he could have allowed his ego as president of the United States to, in this desire to prove himself, to redeem himself after the Bay of Pigs, he could have used it as a, as a time to retaliate, but he didn't. And then the second event that day, the United States was dropping some depth charges over a Russian submarine, B-59, and the sub commander believed that the United States was dropping bombs around it, thought perhaps the war had started between the United States and the Soviets, and he was preparing to fire a torpedo at the United States fleet. And the second in command, an unknown officer by the name of Vasily Arkhipov, stepped in and not only taught a senior officer and another officer out of firing that torpedo, he really helped stop and prevent really a war from accidentally happening. Who is the most responsible for preventing nuclear war here or World War III between the United States and the Soviets? Well, it's clear that Kennedy and Khrushchev played a role, but I contend that our Kipov, in this case, might very well be the real hero. How was the Cuban Missile Crisis resolved? A, the Russians removed missiles from Cuba. B, the United States promised to not invade Cuba. C, the US promised to remove missiles from Turkey. Or D, all of the above. Three, two, one, now. The answer is all of the above. On October the 28th, just a day after Black Saturday, Khrushchev sent an open letter to Kennedy agreeing to remove the missiles if the United States promised to not invade Cuba. And Kennedy quickly agreed to that. Now we know also that the Soviets sort of privately demanded that the United States also remove 
Jupiter missiles right next door to the Soviet Union, threatening the Soviet Union. Kennedy weighed the options, and Kennedy agreed to do this. But it, it was done on a separate side deal. It was done very covertly. He demanded that it be done secretly. What we know is the removal of those Jupiter missiles from Turkey ended up being a secret that was held for some 25 years. The United States at that time did not want to alarm our allies. We did not want to lose credibility with our allies publicly. In fact, President Eisenhower on a phone conversation with Kennedy uh, asked Kennedy about the Jupiter missiles in Turkey. And Kennedy was evasive. He kept the truth from him. He actually lied to him. Uh, this is the lie from one president to another president. But it did end up remaining a secret for some 25 years. And it did help hold off the United States and the Soviets from getting into war. What was created following the Cuban Missile Crisis between the United States and Soviet Union to prevent future miscalculations during the Cold War? Was it A, a White House Kremlin phone, B, a satellite link, C, a White House Kremlin teletype, or D, a covert messenger service? Three, two, one, now. The answer is a White House Kremlin teletype. Now there was lots of room for misinterpretations and miscalculations during this crisis, especially during Black Saturday. But you know, the United States didn't know this at the time. Some of those local Cuban commanders had been given authority to fire some of these nuclear missiles. And so what happens, I think very wisely, the United States and the Soviet Union set up a White House Kremlin hotline. It was a teletype that was installed and it was to be used for future use to help prevent any future miscalculations or misjudgments. It's been used numerous times during the Cold War and even up until more recent days. In fact, the United States also has a hotline, a system to even make contact with the Chinese government today so that something like this also, miscalculations or misunderstandings that could drag either nation into war. How many questions did you get right out of seven? I'd be curious to know, drop your score in the comment section below. In fact, also tell us something new perhaps that you learned in our press trivia here. If you like what you watch today and you feel like you got some value from it, hit the like button. Also do us a favor, share this video with some of your friends and family. And if you haven't subscribed to be part of our Press Politics family, hit the subscribe button now.